it, it's a, the brand itself identifies you. It differentiates you. It gives you authenticity. People know who you are. You've got that integrity. That's part of your brand. It's very similar to what happens when we see Nike or Microsoft. We immediately identify with the brand and the quality of the product. Well, that's the same thing about creating your leadership brand. So how do we go out about creating this leadership brand? Well, there are four elements that I believe are key to creating that leadership brand. And those are, what are they? Who would like to say? <laughs> okay, because I'm tired of hearing it from me. Let's hear from you. What are they? Excellent. How you think, how you look, how you sound, and how you act. Put those together and that creates that leadership brand. And we're going to take a look at every one of those. Now, in the interest of time, we're not going to go into as much detail as the information I've provided you. I've given you extra information because I want you to go and take that back and build on it. But we'll talk enough about it today so you will understand it and you will have the necessary tools that you can begin to practice it so that you can develop that differentiator that is just you. So let's start with how we think. How does a leader think? These come to mind. The first is be impeccable with your word. What does that mean to you? Now these are in thoughts. And thoughts. What does it mean if I were to say to you, you must be impeccable with your word, with your thoughts? What does it mean? Anybody have an idea? Okay, you're saying it's integrity. Be trustworthy. Be trustworthy. It's the way you're thinking. Good. What it's also saying is this. Don't use your thoughts against you. Do not use internal dialogue to criticize, demean, demoralize, judge, and degrade you. Because that kills your confidence, doesn't it? And let's be honest, everything begins with a thought. All right? It's cause and effect. And the, the thought is the cause. And the effect will be your reaction to your thought. So if you talk to yourself in the negative, if you say, I am such a loser, I always mess things up, guess what happens? You mess things up. Okay, now quantum physicists have proven scientifically that thoughts are energy. They actually can be measured. Negative thoughts operate on a different frequency than positive thoughts. So here's what's happening. Have you ever noticed you get up one morning and, oh, just one little thing goes wrong. You stub your toe. And then you, you say, oh, my God, and you go off, all right? And all these negative thoughts. And do you ever notice then for the rest of the day, everything wrong happens to you over and over and over again? Well, here's why. Because we're like transmitters. When you, when you think that negative thought, it's going out on a frequency. It's traveling out. It's energy that travels outwards. And what it does, it's traveling on the frequency of negativity. And so everything it pulls back is negative. The same thing happens for positive thoughts. That operates on a higher frequency. So when you send out positive thoughts, you get back positive results. So it's not by accident. Now, this is the secret that the very successful have known for as long as time exists. Some of it knew it consciously, some of it unconsciously. But quantum physics confirms it. And so change your thoughts, and you can change your life. Control your thoughts. Don't let your thoughts control you. So that's the first one. Be impeccable with your word. OK, the next one is don't make assumptions. What does that mean to you, anyone? And what is the harm of making an assumption? Who'd like to guess? The harm is that you could be making an assumption that's incorrect. Always ask questions. Excellent. Always ask questions. 
excellent. What she said is the harm is, what happens is we make an assumption. And how do we treat our assumption? As facts. Instead of really going to the person, Denise, instead of, if you said something to me, rather than ask you, well, Denise, what did you mean by that? I go back and stew, OK? Now, if I'm a positive person, I might be thinking it in a good way. But if I'm a negative person, I'll think, what did she mean by that? What is she implying? That I'm not good enough for my job? What's she trying to tell me? Maybe she's that backstabber. And I'm starting to, I create this drama in my head, right? All on the assumption. And then what do I do to poor Denise? The next time I see her, I react, not on her words, but on the assumptions that I have made a reality. And that's the danger. Another, you all can probably identify with this. You're working with a client. Client calls your manager. And you don't know what the conversation's about, but it's just before lunch. Manager calls you. I need to see you right after lunch. I just got a call from the client. What happens to you during lunch? <laughs> <laughs> if you go out with a bunch of people, you're all going to be talking about it, right? Yeah. And fear is setting in. And we're imagining the worst. Oh my god. And then, and then you start to defend yourself. Well, wait a minute. I wasn't the project manager on this. It's not my fault. I didn't do it. All right, so now by the time you go to the manager, you are either a nervous wreck, scared to death, or in defense mode. You're ready to attack. So your body language and everything about you is ready for combat or ready to flee. And the reality is she might be telling you they were thrilled with the project. She might be telling you he wasn't really happy with the project as a whole, but they really noticed that your portion of it was outstanding and they'd like you to take the lead. Right? So that's the danger of making assumptions. OK, next one. Don't take it personally. Why not? Well, I mean, this is hard to do. But let's say it was Maria. Maria, let's say I walk up to you, all right, and you say hi, and I say, I'm busy. All right? I'm busy. All right. So now I'm asking you, don't take it personally. Is that possible? How is she not going to take it personally? Why would I tell you not to take it personally? Well, Who can guess? Yes? You don't know what's going on in their life and their circumstances, and nine times out of ten, it has absolutely nothing to do with you. Absolutely well said. What she said was that nine times out of ten, it has nothing to do with you because the reality is that we spend 99% of our time thinking about ourselves. Isn't that true? <laughs> we, are, we are the stars of our life story. We have a drama going on. We have a production company starring. I am the star of my show. You are all bit players because I'll probably never see you again. If I have a mate, He's a co-star, right? <laughs> and then we have some supporting roles. But we act as if we are the center of the universe. We forget that we are all interdependent. We really are one. You know, if you put your hand under a microscope, did you know that it's not solid? That it's, it's jiggling around. It's just energy. And we are all really, we look like we are separate, but we're really soup. We're just a cosmic soup all mixed up together. But what happens here, when we, when we take it personally, we forget that most of the time it's not about us. And one of the best things you can do when you exhibit leadership skills is not react to that. I'll give you an example. I was at the checkout line at Harris Teeter one day. And I get into the line. And the woman, young girl, she is not, now you know I teach customer care. So I am a stickler. If, if you do good, I will go tell the boss. If you do bad, I will go tell your boss. <laughs> Everywhere I go, because I feel it's critical to the business success. So I feel responsible about that. So what happens is this woman is so unfriendly. And you know, she's going through my groceries. I think like she's throwing them. And I'm really getting angry. I'm taking it personally. And I was going to react.